37 yard attempt. For a man who's been money. Biggest kick of the year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Snap good, hold good, and Raiders in, Chargers out, Steelers in. What is up, Raider Nation? Welcome into the Silver and Black Show. Aaron Coscarelli alongside my all-pro tackle, Lincoln Kennedy. An unbelievable finish to an absolutely unbelievable regular season to beat the team that handed the Las Vegas Raiders their first loss of the season and to do it in overtime. Lincoln, I need to get your initial reaction, not just as a broadcaster, but I need it as a fan and I need it as a former player. Well, it was one of the most exciting games I've ever witnessed and, and can, in recent history, I can either remember uh, having been there and, 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 and just saw it up front. It was, I, I used all my natural glycerin pills. My heart was pounding, <laughs> you see. I mean, it, it was one of those spectacular <laughs> games back and forth. You were in it to the very uh, end and there's nothing better to me than beating a divisional rival Oof. in a in order to go to the playoffs. That's sweet victory right there. Oh, like that. I mean, there were so many things, like you said, heart palpitations. <laughs> My heart was fluttering the entire time. I mean, so many different, you know, fourth down conversions yeah. in overtime. And then to have Daniel Carlson, of course, through the uprights. But this is huge, not just for the Raiders organization, but how about for Las Vegas to see that kind of win at home? really is a signature win if you yeah. think about it, EC, because you're the last game on, the final game of the, of the regular season, playoff implications. I mean, NBC had to be proud oh. to show it. I mean, you, you had an exciting game going back and forth in it to the end. And even when you thought it was over, if you got up, you missed something, yeah. came back and something had changed. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, we gave the NFL the best show yeah. on Sunday night. Yeah. Absolutely right. Well, the first time... Since 2016, the only two players, of course, on the roster left from when they made the postseason that time was Derek Carr and Jalen Richard. Let's hear what they have to say about this team finally getting over the hump and making it to the postseason. You know, the fact that we're in the tournament is uh, it's really cool. You know, I, again, like I said afterwards, I'm super thankful. Like, um, you know, I, I've worked my tail off. I've you know, prayed that I could experience that one day, and I get to. You know, it's cool. And uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't. My goal wasn't just to make the playoffs; it was a part of it. But you know, you always have bigger goals and bigger dreams, and you're always trying to achieve more. So um, for me, it's exciting, but still trying to keep that laser focus on the job at hand. It, it means the world to me that we still have a chance to reach our goal, which is winning the Super Bowl. You know. Uh, Making the playoffs is just one of the goals, but the main goal is winning the Super Bowl, and, and that's what we have our eyes on. So I'm just excited that uh, our biggest goal that we planned for, that we talked about for, that we put all the work in up until this point, that we still have the ability to obtain that. All right, well, the last time the Raiders won a playoff game was back in 2002. I say you might remember it because it was your all-pro <laughs> season link. A lot of our players have little to no playoff experience, including all four of our captains take us through link what it was like for you guys when you made the postseason for the first time and what must th these players be going through mentally this week well you know this is a dream coming look at them. you're, you're look exciting at them. you're a excited beast. to to be in the playoffs obviously but the goal is to, to obviously as Jalen Rashard said get to the championship it's really nerve-wracking obviously because you're sitting you're anticipating that day and for the Raiders it's coming you know really soon and they're going to be uh, they're going to be going up against a good football team I remember the first time we made the playoffs in 2000 we ended up hosting the AFC Championship game in Oakland against the Ravens. That was our first year in the playoffs. And so it was a little overwhelming getting to that position at that point. But after that, you kind of got used to wanting to win and wanting to taste that, you know, getting yeah. that close. So it's a it's a really great opportunity for this team, especially for all the hard work and everything they've done this season, to actually have a chance to be a part of it now. Well, what gives me comfort in a team that doesn't have a lot of postseason experience is they had a lot of postseason experience this season, yeah. not nine one-score games and I believe six walk-off wins. So they've had a lot of high 
pressure moments just this season, in my opinion, that has set them up uh, for a team that will be going to the postseason for the first time in a, in a few years. All right. Um, well, listen, to get here this way while dealing with so much adversity says a lot about this team because the Raiders have put up some big-time record-breaking performances along the way. Let us show you what the Raiders' milestones in 2021 look like. And let's start with, of course, Derek Carr breaking the franchise single-season passing yards record. How about Hunter Renfro becoming the second Raider all-time with over 100 receptions? Denzel Perryman, the newest addition to our defense, breaking the franchise single-season tackle record. And, of course, Daniel Carlson doing Daniel Carlson-like things. One guy that I wanted to ask you about, didn't get enough love this year, was how consistent the play of Colton Miller has been. This guy is one of two players on the roster that has played every single offensive snap. What have you liked, what have you seen out of Colton Miller this year? His growth. Uh, offensive okay. linemen are just judged by consistency. Colton Miller just doesn't get beat. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Uh, it's very rare to see him give up anything and, and have any penalties, and he's done his job at the top level all this season. He was one of the guys I, I you know, felt bad that he didn't get into the Pro Bowl because I think he definitely deserved the way he was playing. Especially, like you said, so many different moving parts yeah. on that line. Colton Miller being the consistent guy that he's been for that team. And to see the improvement the offensive line has made thus far, yeah. it's helped our run game. And yeah. you saw it just last week against the Chargers. All right, coming up next, we are taking a look back to week 11 in our very first matchup with the Bengals. What can we take away from that game? We are going to discuss when we come back. Don't go anywhere. The Silver and Black Show is brought to you by NV Energy, powering the silver and black. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. And by Las Vegas. Vegas is the greatest arena on earth. Plan now at VisitLasVegas.com. He does not call the of two. Carr swinging one through the hands of Drake. Yeah, we came out flat. It was terrible. Um, There's no beating around it. I mean, it's just last couple weeks we just take turns, you know, and uh, just really out of sync right now, and it's not, it, no one's coming to save us, so we better figure it out. Give it a mix it. Hard cut. Diving. Touchdown, Cincinnati. I don't think nobody happy in that locker room right now. As you can see on my face, I'm not too happy. We got to put it together, man. Uh, like you said, no, that's three weeks in a row. I mean, no, no, nobody liked losing, and I feel like those three losses were, like, critical. Oh, that's a fly. Intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. It's tough, you know. Losses like this really hurt, um, especially for the last couple of weeks. Um, I think we've showed up to the stadium prepared and ready to go. So anytime you could go out there and get everything you got and just that be the result, it hurts. we got to grow and we got to learn, and we don't really have time to sit and mope and complain. Burrow. End zone. Touchdown. Jamar Chase. Nixon has gone over 100 yards rushing. And then some. Nixon shifting gears for the touchdown. I believe we have a very talented team uh, in all phases of the game. I feel like I've seen what our, our best football looks like, our better football, and uh, when we can put it together and be consistent with it uh, in that ability, that's when I know things are able to turn around uh, with the talent that we have here, but you know, we gotta make it happen. It's not just gonna fall in our lap. A game they'd like to forget, but they can't, okay? The last time the Raiders played the Bengals just eight weeks ago inside Allegiant looked like this, a loss 32-13. Now the Raiders must find a way to go on the road in frigid temperatures to pull off a W. Here are the Week 11 full game stats. Link, I turn to you. What did we learn from this first matchup? 
how much should we even take away from this game? Defense has to get off the field. You see those third down percentage conversions, 50%, Yikes. and you see that time of possession there? Yeah. When it's skewed in that favor, it's really hard for you to be productive. And how it, and defense just got worn down in the first game. Uh, eventually in the second half, they were just out there for, for far too long. Offensively, they didn't do enough to convert first downs. They were one of seven in that stat there. So yeah. offense has to do its part by keeping the defense as fresh as possible. The best way to do that is you get off the football field when you can uh, and, and, you know, win on third down. So And, and stop the guy we just showed, number yeah. 28. We didn't have answers for Joe Mixon. He torched our run defense. 123 yards, two touchdowns. However, I have some good news for you, Link. I would like to show you some stats from our last four games. <laughs> we have managed to improve our run defense by a lot. We, of course, held the Broncos to just 18 rushing yards, and that will show in our weeks 15 through 18 yards per game, 78 and a half. Um, do you feel confident that this unit can match up against Joe Mixon for round two? I do. I, I do. I think that uh, collectively as a team, we're playing better than they did in week 11. And so that's what gives me, you know, hope that they can go in and win this wild card game because they're consistently playing better on both sides of the ball, all three phases, I should say. Even the special teams have contributed. So the defense has been a lot better and offense has been a lot more productive as well. But why? Why has our run defense improved so much? You know, it, Chemistry is a big part of football. Okay. It takes time to gel and for people to come together. Denzel Perriman was a great find for this defense. He's been a tackling machine. But you also got to keep in point that, that everyone needs to be collectively uh, together on the defense. Max Crosby and the defensive ends, defensive tackles, all of them need to contribute to slow down players like Joe Mixon. You know, they gave up over 100 yards to Jonathan Taylor in the Indy game, but they were still able to win. So that's why I say collectively as a team, they're playing a lot better. First 100-yard game by Jonathan Taylor that he did not win right. this season, too, mind you. Well, let's listen in on Gus Bradley on his belief why the team's difference from Week 11 to Week Now. Coach, take it away. You know, they're playing together more. The communication's better. Um, the execution's better. I think we're doing a much better job on third down. Uh, you know, so I think, that, you know, that comes back to just our execution. So, you know, it really starts up front for us. I think those guys, you know, kind of set the tone and the back end is uh, played accordingly. So you know, they, they feel like they're playing as a unit right now with the communication. It's not just understanding the defense, but some of the things that go along with down and distance tendencies and some indicators for us. Insight from Coach Bradley, gotta love him. All right, coming up, Coach Bisaccia sits down with JT the Brick, and he discusses the Raiders' upcoming matchup against the Bengals. Stick around, we'll be right back. The regular season finale against the division rival Chargers proved the will of this Raiders football team. To outsiders, it was a fun story that was finally coming to an end on the backs of Justin Herbert and the high-powered L.A. offense. However, for the Raiders, just as they have all season long, decided not to succumb to storylines and narratives and instead overcame once again a roadblock placed in front of them. Interim head coach Rich Bisaccia has instilled in this team a mindset of resilience. They will, of course, look to carry on the road in the biggest game of the last two decades for this storied franchise. Okay, coach, we sit here ready for the playoffs, and it's been an incredible run. The game on Sunday night was an instant classic. Tell me about the experience at the end of the game, your celebration, and taking that all in in front of the Raider Nation. Well, it's, you know, certainly to be able to, to do that in our stadium with the, the crowd and, and um, the way it was in the black hole down there and, and uh, to be able to, to have that type of a game um, and to win it at the end like that um, in our stadium, in this venue, uh, was certainly a, a thrilling event for us. And, and uh, I think in the locker room, it was just joy or, or overjoy, whatever you want to call it, and, and a sense of accomplishment by the men in that room. So it, it was exciting. They're calling it the best. It might have been one of the greatest regular season games of all time. And there were so many big plays, Coach, on both sides of the ball. I just thought it would be important to point out Darius Phylon. He got injured in that game, but on that fourth and one at the Chargers 18, that was not only one of the biggest plays of the year, biggest plays of the year in the NFL. Yeah, interesting call, you know, uh, by our opponent. So, um, but again, our, our defense rose to the occasion. It really, it turns into like a turnover for us. You know, we got the one turnover by um, 
uh, on the punt team. You know, yep. we did a great job of knocking it out. And then we got one, uh, you know, on defense. And then really that fourth and one, when you stop them down there like that, that's a turnover. It gives us another scoring opportunity. So great job on our defense. Josh Jacobs is just playing explosive now. Can you touch on the runs after contact? How he's been running, how physical he is once he gets hit? Well, I think this is the time of year where you have to run the football, right? So I think the trust factor between him and the offensive line has started to develop. We're still creating our identity in the run game. And, you know, when Josh gets in space like that and it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and he's hell-bent to break a tackle. And you've talked about this when he wants the ball, what that's like when you look in his eyes in the third and fourth quarter. What is that like, Coach? Yeah, Josh is funny. He comes off all the time, so I want the ball. We just gave it to you two <laughs> times. That's why you came out. You know, so again, it's a little bit of a philosophy this time of year. Certainly, we're going on the road to play in some type of weather condition. Um, and then running the football is a big factor in our play-action pass game as well. The defense last four games only given up 78.5 yards rushing against some really good backs especially on the road coming into Cincinnati with Joe Mixon. So they're peaking at the right time, stopping the run. I think so. You know, we, last time we played these guys at home, we kind of let Mixon out of the bag a little bit. I think he had 123 yards, and, and uh, we did a good job in the, in the run game early, and then, um, you know, we turned it over in the fourth quarter twice, so gave our defense some bad field positions. This is a really good offensive line coached by a guy I'm really familiar with. We were together for five years in Dallas. He understands the pace and the tempo and the relentless effort, which we want to play on defense and really as a team. So um, he'll have his guys ready. He'll be an interesting matchup. Chase in that game, Jamar Chase had three receptions. You kept him low in yardage, one touchdown. And since then, he's shattered all these rookie records. What have you seen since he was in Las Vegas looking at him now on tape? Well, it looks like they're getting a little bit more comfortable with each other, right? The chemistry with the quarterback. I think he became the rookie of the year, you know, a week ago. And so I think you see chemistry building, trust factor building within his offense and where he fits and the quarterback knowing he's going to be in a certain spot at the correct time. And that's what you see on film. He's a problem right now. Coach, we want to wrap it up with Daniel Carlson. Four special team player of the week awards. Never been done before. Five walk-offs. As a special teams guy, now the head coach of this team, the prep. Can you talk about his preparation and what makes him different to have a year like this? Well, he's got a kind of a hard hat mentality to begin with. You know, he comes to work every day. I don't know if he really thinks of himself as just a kicker. I think he thinks of himself as a football player. He kicked and punted, you know, all through high school and did a little bit early in college. So I know he feels like he's a part of the team. He's got a great work mentality. Um, he's got a great mindset. You know, he's got a next play. Um, mindset. So if he does happen to have a bad play somewhere in there, like maybe possibly he kicks the ball out of bounds, and it doesn't happen that often, but he can come back, get his head right, and have a chance to win it for us in the end. Finally, the fans again. It's a central location. Raider Nation likes to travel. You just came off one of the greatest experiences I've ever seen with Raider fans at a home game. Now they're inspired to get out on the road. I've talked to fans on radio all week are finding a way to get tickets and get to Cincinnati. You love seeing those fans on the road. Oh, I, they'll be there. They travel so well. Every place we've ever been, we see them getting off the bus from the at the hotel, and then we see them certainly on game day. They're in the stands. Now, unfortunately, they scatter them out a little bit because of the seats, but they'll find a way to get together be loud. Good luck in Cincinnati, Coach. Thank you so much. The Silver and Black Show has been brought to you by 1800, the best taste in tequila and official partner of the Raiders. And by Chevron with Tecron gives you unbeatable cleaning and mileage. Chevron, together ahead. Uh, those guys are pretty good. Obviously, you know, they had a connection since college. Um, but um, in the league, it's been even more. Um, it's, you know, obviously, it's a little tougher in the league. So the, the things that those guys are able to do, you know, is phenomenal. But, um, you know, it's just got a connection. And it's not just them. You got a connection with all the receivers and the running backs and things like that. So I think the other guys just get, you know, a little overshadowed a little bit. But they got, they got a three-headed monster over there at receiver and then a really good um, running back as well. All right, Casey Hayward, of course, tipping his cap to the production between Joe Burrow and his wideouts, specifically Jamar Chase. Last time we played, we allowed a touchdown to the young wideout, but kept him mostly in check. That would mean this week, Microsoft matchup of the week is between Casey Hayward and Jamar Chase. Will be, of course, a test to be able to slow down um, and Bisaccia being very focused on it as well. What have you seen? Um, with their whiteout group, if you will. And what's Casey Hayward going to need to do to slow down 
Jamar Chase specifically. Well, Casey Hayward has been one of the better corners in the league. He hasn't really been tested a lot. Uh, people have kind of stayed away from him and gone to the other side of the field. But just out of the Bengals receiving core, there's, they've been opportunistic. The fact is they get, had a ton of yards after the catch in a lot of their football games. And Joe Burrow now has you know, a chemistry with them to where he's not afraid to take chances, to take risks. They have, they have lit up the scoreboard in recent weeks. You see here, yards after the catch. It, doesn't, it looks like the Kansas City Chiefs are standing still. He gets the football and he's off to the races. So you can't afford to let, let that happen. Yeah, I mean, and you see right there, most receiving yards as a rookie in NFL history. These guys, of course, know each other going back to college. Um, they will be tough to stop. How about another matchup of utmost importance between both of these squads, of course, will be the pass rush game. Max Crosby going up against, even though he's not really going up against, Trey Hendrickson, another pass rusher that has done very well against opposing offenses this year. Um, take a look, 14 sacks by Hendrickson. Oh, he's a force. He's a force. But Max Crosby had a, one of his best games as a pro last week against the Chargers. He was an impact player. He was everywhere doing everything. They need to have that again. And you need to find a way to control, you know, Trey Hendrickson from the Cincinnati Bengals. So expect a lot of chip, a lot of help block. But I, I can't, I was uh, amazed the game that Max Crosby had. The energy level it had to be just you know, exhausted after all the plays they had. But yeah, he's definitely been a force. Yeah, Hendrickson, of course, had that strip sack that es essentially sealed the game last time we yeah. played. Um, and Max Crosby leading the NFL with 82 QB pressures. What does that say about a guy like Max and what he can do against an opposing Effort. It, it, I mean, yeah. it, the effort is always there. Max Crosby doesn't know how to turn off his motor. If you no. watch him, every time he's out there, he's performing at a high level. You combine that with the rest of the defensive line, and that's why that, that four-man rush is so pivotal of getting to the quarterback and creating havoc for opposing quarterbacks. I always ask you your keys to the game, but what would you say for a team that plays very comfortably inside Vegas, what are they going to need to do really quickly in very cold, frigid temperatures? Start, start fast. But also just keep the faith. It's going to be a long game. You're going up against a good opponent. You still have to find a way to win. I think they'll do fine back east. And they did it against Cleveland. They did it against Cleveland last yep. year in frigid temperatures. If anything, this team is well prepared for that. Uh, this is the Silver and Black Show. For Lincoln Kennedy, I'm Aaron Coscarelli. We will see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>